Welcome to the Eagle Valley Model Railroad. In this video, we're going to take our lumber yard chip mill from this to this. So let's get started showing you the process. So this is the area we're going to be working on. It's the uh, chip mill lumber laydown yard. You can tell from the shot right here we've got a pretty significant S turn and that's caused us some issues um, with our rail cars tracking back and uh, giving us some spotting issues. So what we're going to do here, we're just going to start removing some of the scenery. And we're going to try our best to save what we can. Uh, you can see just spraying some water and alcohol mix onto some of the um, ground cover. It comes up relatively easy. Um, I'm not, I don't have much pressure going right here with this screwdriver and it's just, it's peeling right up. And what I have seen is that if this dries, it dries in more of clumps, which uh, can represent uh, bushes and shrubs in uh, in another use. So we're going to try to save just absolutely as much as we can. And we'll do the same process with the uh, water alcohol mix with, um, with the rest of the scenery. I was going for trying to get this road up right here and it's just the uh, small ballast or the fine ballast and it, for whatever reason it, it glued down hard, real good and hard. Um, so we tried again to wet it, we let it soak, um, we've cut the video a couple of times and just let it, I mean, absolutely soak. And it just didn't want to come up. So we, we wasn't able to salvage a lot, a lot of the uh, fine ballast. We were able to save just a little bit of it. But um, for the most part, we just cleaned it up as, as good as we could. And, um, and got rid of it. We just used the shop vac and just cleaned it up the best we could right here i was just uh, breaking it up just trying to give uh, the water some areas to, to seep down into and as we let it soak we're going to remove the rest of the uh, scenery uh, the rest of the ground cover this is the georgia red clay it came up relatively easy. I didn't worry about trying to save it. I've got enough in the backyard that I don't believe I'll ever run out. So we went on ahead and just started cleaning up and clearing around the uh, the track area. Uh, trying to be a little easy, be careful. Um, just scrape up to the ties. I don't want to mark up the ties. I don't want to break any ties or anything like that. So we're taking our uh, time with it, being easy with it. But this stuff comes up uh, relatively easy. I, I didn't have to do much to uh, to get it up. I'm just using some scrapers. Um, that's actually a wood chisel I'm using right now. And just using the, the, the blade of it to, uh, to get all this stuff up. Actually does a real good job of uh, removing the material and keeping the uh, keeping the, the the track nice 
and, and not scarred up so bad. So it, it does a good job. And again, a wet shop vac and it just getting up as much material as we can get up. When my track's glued down. If you've watched any videos in the past, the track's glued down with a foam friendly adhesive. And uh, it, it comes up relatively easy. It, it's, it's really not a big deal of getting, getting track up and it doesn't tear the foam up. So uh, I'm really pleased with that product. Um, I, I've actually showed a few videos of what it is, but um, and I'll go back with it I'll, uh, when we decide the configuration of this piece of track we're going back with. We'll uh, we'll use that same adhesive to go back with it. I'm pleased with its results for sure. So again, we're just cleaning up as, as much as we can. Um, you want to make sure you get most of the material up. It just makes things easier. And right here we're using our specialty hacksaw blade. Uh, it's got electric tape on one end. And it just it's as simple as running it between the track and the foam. And it releases and you can wiggle it free. And that takes care of that. I was going do some cleaning of the track on camera, but decided against it. It just, it's a lot messier on, on camera. So basically what I did was I took it to the bathroom, held it over the sink, um, got a brass wire brush. That's, that, that won't mess up the ties. It's a little bit softer bristles. Uh, run it on under some lukewarm water and it loosens up the um, white glue and water mixture and we got the track pretty clean. Uh, here you're able to kind of go at it a little bit more aggressive uh, getting up the ground foam since the track is out of the way and again we're just getting up absolutely as much as we can so we'll have a, a as clean a surface to work with when we start uh, placing the track back down and figuring out exactly how we want to set up this scene again. Um, I will tell you when we get the track laid and get it like we want it, it will be a while before we do any scenery type stuff. Just just for the simple fact of why I'm having to take all this up now. If I had not put the scenery down at this point, um, I would have already had the uh, track laid in position like I want it and um, we'd be done with this area. But because of the scenery and the scenic pieces, we have to take a little bit of extra time. Here we're just 60 grit sandpaper, and again, just trying to get our surface back to as original as we can. You don't, you don't have to. Um, the track's a little bit more forgiving. This is an industrial area. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is an industrial area, so the track may or may not be perfectly laid. Um, some in industrial areas, the track is, is a little bit rougher than, of course, your main lines and things. So, not having it perfectly smooth isn't a big deal, but I wanted to get it just as, just as close to as original surface as I could. And using the old shop back again as your friend, it gets up a good bit of the stuff and it scrapes you can use the edge as a scraper and it, it just it just does a great job. And again, I'm probably being a little more meticulous than I need to be. Uh, decided to, I wasn't going to, but then decided, you know, I'm, it's not gonna be a scenic area for a while. Let's get this thing back as fresh as we can get it. So we're actually gonna put some of our uh, ground cover brown uh, over everything right here and just really give us a fresh look and a uh, a new start with this this is covering up any when I pulled up the old track you could see some of the uh, reference lines that I drew with Sharpie and uh, different other elements that I've uh, put down on my phone board 
and this covered it right up. That way there's no stray marks or anything like that. It just it just gives us a, a cleaner look and a better surface to uh, to work with. It's definitely something you don't have to do, especially if you're going to go back in scenic uh, the area again. But I was like, you know, why not? So while my paint's drying, we're going to go ahead and uh, work on this area right here. This was, this was our um, propane facility. It'll continue to be our propane facility. The track work works just fine. Um, the magnets are placed for decoupling, perfect. I just didn't, um, it was one of my first scenes um, that I was gonna go full detail with, but with all the work going on behind it, against the wall, um, the new incline that's coming soon, all of that, I was doing more harm than good with the foreground uh, scene being um, being built. So definitely a good good tip, a good thing I've learned is, um, and, and, it, and it's obvious, I mean now that it's over and done with, it's obvious, work the background toward the foreground. That way anything that's done and complete you don't have to reach over. You don't have to try to get your hand without messing it up. Because anytime you, you're real careful going in and placing something, but as you come back, uh, your elbow's going to knock down antennas or handrails or stuff like that. So, uh, knew better, um, but hey, it is what it is. You live and learn. We're gonna do this area the same way. We're gonna sand it down, put a little brown paint on it, just to get it to where it's almost an original, untouched scene when we get ready to go back with uh, the buildings and uh, some of the ground cover and stuff. So, and plus, like I say, it's gonna be a little bit before we do put the scenery in the in the buildings back, so it just makes it a lot a lot cleaner. Give this some time to dry and uh, get our track cleaned up and we'll start laying this stuff down. You can't tell it because we've uh, painted over and cleaned it up, but that track right there actually runs just about with the old uh, gravel drive that went back there so what we're going to do is instead of having a driveway to access we're going to uh, have like a lay down yard just somewhere for the trucks to pull in and then the um, crane will grab um, the logs off of it so what we're doing here is just using this for a straight edge uh, we want to get the uh, straight pieces of track just as straight as we can um, I'm not a professional model railroader by any stretch of the imagination But man, it's it, it bothers me when I look down a, a piece of straight track and it's not and it's just as wavy as it can be um, It just aesthetically isn't pleasing so I try my best to get all my straights straight um, and my, all my curves, I try to make sure they, they're consistently sweeping. I know we do easements and things of that nature. I hadn't got into um, easements coming into curves and coming out uh, as of yet, just because of the limitation of the size of the layout that I'm on. But uh, I understand the, the, the principles behind it. And that will be something utilized in, on future layouts. But right here, I try to make my curves consistent and I try to make my straight straight. They just, they look better to me. So we're using our foam friendly adhesive. Um, just spray it down and smooth it out. Uh, the reason we smoothen it out, it just adheres to the track a little better. Plus, it doesn't squirt up between the ties quite so bad. If you get a little bit of that going on, it's, it's really not that big of a deal. 
So again, just getting our straight straight. And making sure our curves stay relatively uh, consistent. Using these T-pins and this two inch foam, I, I wouldn't know what else to use. Uh, I like it. Uh, I see some guys using um, thumbtacks, uh, everything, you know, just whatever you like, but this is what I like with this two inch foam. They re really reach down and that you can really pull down uh, on your track if need be, depending on how level your foam board is. You can really get it flat on the surface. Just throwing the uh, ties back in the gaps. That makes the biggest difference, what I've seen, um, in making it look complete. So right here is what we use for our uh, decoupling. Um, that's a 5 32nd bit. Um, those cylinders are probably 3 16 by 3 16 And we're going between three ties. And these fit perfectly between three ties. That's full strength glue going into those holes. And we're going to sink two magnets, di magnets down into those holes. Uh, ensuring that the polarity is the same on the left hand side here. When we switch over to the right hand side here in just a second, you see we flip the magnets over and now we've changed polarity on the right hand side. So now when our coupler comes by, um, the, the different polarities will ensure that we pull our couplers away from each other. Adding the um, white glue water mix. This ensures that the glue will sink down in between the magnets and uh, glue them in place pretty good. They're easy to take up. It's not a big deal. You run a little push pin down between it, flip it up, use another magnet to help pull it up, and they come up relatively easy without tearing, tearing your foam up. And they definitely don't tear the track up, so I do like that. Snatching our pins out here, just throwing them into the uh, foam makes it easier to grab them back and put it in their uh, container when we get done with them. Used a lot of pins. Ha. And do a little run session on this. <clears throat> just to make sure everything works right. Um, decouple on top of the magnet. That is a long bulkhead flat. Uh, as of right now, that's the only thing I've got as far as a uh, flat car to utilize with um, uh, logs and lumber. Uh, so it's, it's pretty long, and that was the one that was giving us a headache um, running back there to, to set off at the end of the spur. Keep you off from having to watch the the whole process. So we just back over the magnet, uh, ensure we stop within the three magnets, pull up, it decouples, and then it uh, keeps the couplers apart so we can push the car back and spot it where we want to. Sorry about it being out of focus back there. And that's pretty much it right there, guys. Show you where we decoupling right here. Got those two push pins in just to mark it. Every time I leaned in to, to see where it was at, I was throwing a shadow on it. So, like I say, just back over it. Make sure you stop over them. They decouple. And you can push it back and spot it wherever you need to. I really like the way the magnets work out with the uh, KDs. It just keeps you from reaching in and having to mess with your cars. And that's kind of what we want to get to. We want to get to where we don't have to reach in and and mess with anything as, as much as possible. I'm gonna do this chip car here. There we go. 
and push it back in. Oh, we're going to follow this one. I tell you, it's fun working a throttle and a camera all together. It makes for some interesting moments. All right. 